Hello again. Today we're going to review the three simple X chains that we learned about in videos 14, 15, and 16. Turbo fish, two string kites, and skyscrapers. These three techniques are all related, so it's a good idea to study them as a group. All right, without further ado, let's go over to the puzzle board. Okay, before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that the stripped down hand-drawn diagrams that you quite often see at the beginnings of most of my tutorials are not real puzzles, and they are not meant to be solved or critically analyzed. They are for demonstration purposes only. So please disregard any random naked singles, X-wings, locked candidates, or any other unrelated pattern you might notice, and instead try to focus only on the particular point I am trying to make. Okay? Great. All three of the simple chains we are going to review today are X chains. This means that every node in the chain will be the same digit like the chain will be composed of all threes or all sevens, for instance. And so, of course, the starting node and the ending node will be two instances of the same digit candidate. And all three types, turbofish, two-string kites, and skyscrapers, are AICs or X chains of exactly three links. Strong, weak, strong. And we know that in any AIC, a strong link can be used in the role of a weak link because it has the properties of both. So these chains can also be constructed strong, 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 and it works just the same. The first and the third links must be strong, i.e. they must be conjugate pairs. But the middle link can be either weak or strong. Because of the inferences of those three links, we know with absolute certainty that if either end of the chain is false, then the other end must be true. This ensures that at least one of the endpoint candidates must be true. And this further means that any same digit candidate that can see both ends of the chain must be false. Are we all clear on that? Okay, good. You can safely apply the term turbofish to any three-link X-chain, but a turbofish is generally going to have a diagonal link in it somewhere within a block like you see here, and it will usually be the first or the third link. The middle link of a turbofish can be diagonal like this, but when that is the case, the chain is more often referred to as a two-string kite, which we will get to in a minute. And if there are no diagonal links and all three links are vertical and horizontal, i.e. that lie exclusively in columns and rows, like this, then that configuration will more often be referred to as a skyscraper, which we will also review later today. So here is your generic turbo fish that has a diagonal link on one end. Let's start here in row four, column one, and we have a strong link down to this three in row six, column two. Then we have a weak link over to this three in row six, column seven, and finally a strong link up to this three in row one, column seven. You see there's a conjugate pair on each end and a weak link in between. A turbo fish is usually going to get you just one elimination, and here in this diagram, it is this candidate three in row one, column one, because it can see both ends of the chain. This chain can also be perceived as an empty rectangle, which has many interesting incarnations. We will cover empty rectangles fully in the next lesson, video number 17. And here in this next diagram, again, we have strong, weak, strong. So you can eliminate the candidate four in row two, column two, that's highlighted in red. And as I mentioned a minute ago, when the middle link is diagonal, as it is here, this configuration can also be perceived as a two-string kite. 
As I pointed out in video number 14, it is possible to get up to three candidate eliminations with a turbofish if you have a diagonal link on both ends of the chain and the endpoints lie in the same house, like this. We have strong, weak, strong. So those three sevens that are colored red in block six can all be eliminated as false in this very rare case. Got it? So let's look at some real examples and some real puzzles. Okay, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate six and let's not use the filters on this first one. We look in column four and we have a strong link from that six to that six. They're the only two sixes in column four, so that's a conjugate pair. Then we go over in row seven to this six, that's a weak link. And there are only two sixes in block seven, so that is a strong link. So there's your chain. It starts up here in row four, column four, and ends in row eight, column three. So the candidate six that can see both ends of that chain is right there, and you can eliminate that candidate six, okay? So let's put it back in and draw the chain as always. And we've got strong, weak, strong. So there's your turbo fish. And you can eliminate that candidate six in row four, column three. All right, next one. Okay, here, let's take a look at candidate nine and let's light them up this time. And we've got a conjugate pair here and then a weak link up to here. And then finally a strong link to that nine. So there is your chain. And the candidate nine that can be eliminated in this case is going to be right here in row four, column one. So you can eliminate that nine as false. But let's put it back in and draw the chain. We've got strong, weak, strong. So there again is your turbo fish with a diagonal link on one of the ends. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, let's take a look at candidate three. And in row three, we have a conjugate pair that begins there and ends there. That's a strong link. And then we've got a weak link down column eight to this three. And then in block nine, we've got our diagonal strong link back to that three there. So there are your endpoints in row three, column five, and in row seven, column seven. Those are the two endpoints. So that means the candidate three to be eliminated will be right there in row seven, column five, that can see both of the endpoints. So let's draw the chain. And we've got strong, weak, and finally strong. There is your turbo fish. Once again, you have a diagonal on one of the ends. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here, let's take a look at candidate eight. And in row three, we've got a conjugate pair that goes from there to there. Then we've got a weak link that goes right down one cell and then a strong link as a diagonal link in block four to this candidate eight. So there is your chain. And that means we can eliminate the candidate eight that lies in row six, column six, right there. That is false. So we'll put it back in and draw the chain. And our turbo fish is strong, weak, strong. There it is, turbo fish. Let's, <laughs> let's do one more. I think I'm starting to lose my mind here. So uh, let's take a look at candidate seven in this last puzzle. And we've got a strong link down in row nine going from right to left. And then we have a weak link, which is a surrogate weak link up to that seven in block four, and then a strong link over to that seven. That's our diagonal last strong link, which is a conjugate pair, which means we can eliminate the candidate seven in block five. That's in row five, column six. That seven is going to be false, okay? So we can eliminate that seven, but let's put it back in and we'll draw the chain and we've got strong, weak, strong. There it is, there's your turbo fish. So I think these are pretty straightforward and I hope you all understand these now. So let's move on to the two string kites.
In these next few diagrams, I am only showing the chain itself, with the endpoints in yellow, the weakly linked candidates in blue, and the elimination candidate in red. The strong links are marked with blue arrows, and the weak link is marked with a green line. The only restriction on these chains is that the first and the third links must be conjugate pairs, meaning they have to be the last two remaining instances of that candidate in that house, which further means that there is a conventional strong link between them. I trust that you are able to use your imagination to visualize all those things. A two-string kite is almost the exact same thing as a turbofish, except that the middle link will be on a diagonal within a block instead of it being on either end of the chain. So that diagonal link can look like this, kind of like a boomerang, or it can look like this, kind of like a chair, <laughs> or it can look like this. And this is the one that really resembles a kite with the two strong links crisscrossing like that. Those two blue arrows are crisscrossing. And this forms the kite shape, as we can see here. If we draw these extra two lines, you can see the kite shape, which is where it gets its name. And the two strings are the two blue arrows. Those are the two strings of the two-string kite. Notice that this pattern always has to turn the corner, so to speak. Like those two yellow threes, they're not in the same chute. They kind of turn the corner at block five, if you know what I mean. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to eliminate that candidate three in row one, column one, is if those two yellow threes are in different chutes. And here in this diagram, it's the same thing. The two yellow twos are turning the corner at block five. Of course, it's not always going to be block five like that, but in these diagrams, that's where it turns. And likewise here the two yellow fives are turning the corner at block five, in a matter of speaking. Because if the pattern were contained in one shoot, like this, there would be no possible eliminations. Because the only cells that can see those two endpoints lie in the same shoot, and they would negate the strong links in this pattern. So that can't be. See what I mean? Okay, that's really all there is to these, so let's take a look at some real examples and some real puzzles. All right, here in this diagram, let's take a look at candidate six and we'll light them up. And what we're looking for is two conjugate pairs, one in a row and one in a column, so they'll be perpendicular, and that they connect within a block via a weak link on a diagonal. So here we have a strong link between these two sixes, in row four, and we have another strong link between these two sixes in column nine, and they connect via this weak link in block six. So that will allow us to eliminate the candidate six in row nine, column four, that can see both of those yellow endpoints. So let's draw the chain. We've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link here. Those are two conjugate pairs and they connect in block six via this weak link. Okay? And as you can see, this one has the boomerang shape. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here, let's take a look at candidate five, and this time we've got the version that crisscrosses. We've got a strong link here in row three, and we have another strong link in column two. And the endpoints are the two yellow cells, which means we can eliminate the candidate five in row nine, column seven, right there. That is false. So let's put it back in and draw the chain. We've got a strong link here. And we've got another strong link here. And they are connected in block one via a weak link. Now this is the version where the two strings crisscross with each other and form the real kite shape. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here on candidate four, we've got a strong link that goes there, and we've got a strong link that goes here, and they connect in block one, and that allows us to eliminate the candidate four in row six, column six, Right there, that is false, because it can see the two yellow endpoints of our chain. 
Okay, so we'll put it back in and let's draw the chain. And here's the first strong link and here's the second strong link and they connect in block one via this weak link. And as you can see, this is the chair shaped version, but it's upside down in this puzzle. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate three and we can see we've got a conjugate pair in column three and we have another conjugate pair in row seven and they connect in block seven via that weak link. So that allows us to eliminate the candidate three that lies in row two, column eight, right there. That's going to be false. But let's put it back in there and draw the chain. And once again, we have the version that is the crisscross one that looks just like the kite. So there are your two crisscrossing strong links. And they are connected via this weak link here in block seven. And to complete the kite shape, we're going to draw these extra two lines as you know that I like to do, ha ha ha. And there's your kite. So that's a two string kite. All right, let's do one more. All right, here on candidate one, we have a strong link in column nine that goes from there to there. And we have another strong link in row five that goes from there to there. So that allows us to eliminate the candidate one that can see both of those yellow endpoints, and that will be here in row one, column two. That one is false, but let's put it back in and we'll draw the chain. We've got a strong link here and we've got a strong link here and they are connected by a weak link in block six, just like that. And as you can see, this is another one of those boomerang shaped two string kites. Okay, so I think that's pretty clear. Let's move on to the skyscrapers. Okay, and lastly, we come to the skyscrapers, which are the most powerful of these three types of three link X chains. As you know, there will be no diagonal links in a skyscraper. It will always be composed of two rows and one column like this or two columns and one row like that. And the only thing you have to remember is that the two endpoints must lie in the same chute. These endpoints, those two yellow threes, lie in the same vertical chute. There won't be any eliminations possible if the two endpoints lie in different chutes like this. This is a three link X chain and there is a conjugate pair in row one and a conjugate pair in row seven and they are connected by a weak link in column three. So there is an effective strong link between those two yellow threes. But in this diagram, there are only two cells that can see those endpoints and they are here and here. And if there were a three in either one of those cells, those two strong links in row one and row seven would be negated and this would not work. You just need to be able to recognize each of the four rotational orientations that a skyscraper can take. Upright, like this, upside down, facing left, or facing right. And beyond that, they work like any X chain where any same digit candidate that can see both ends of the chain must be false. But with the skyscraper, there can be up to four eliminations as we learned in video number 16. But be careful. Notice that these two cells do not see both endpoints and these two cells do not see both of the endpoints. The only cells where candidate eliminations are possible are offset like this. These cells see both endpoints. And of course, there are two other cells that can see both endpoints, and that would be here and here, but those cells cannot contain candidate threes or it would negate the strong links. The only cells where eliminations are possible are those four red cells. Okay? All right, let's take a look at some real examples. All right, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate three. 
And what we're looking for is two conjugate pairs, either in two parallel rows connected by a column, or in two parallel columns connected by a row. And here we see in column one, we have a conjugate pair right there. And in column eight, we have another conjugate pair on candidate three that are connected in row eight. So there's your skyscraper. And the candidates that can be eliminated are here, here, and here. Those are the three candidate threes that can see both of those yellow threes. Now notice this three and this three do not see both of those yellow threes. They only see the threes that are in the same block. But those three red ones, they see both. So they can all be eliminated as false. But let's put them back in and draw the chain. And we have a strong link here and a strong link here. And they are connected by a surrogate weak link in row eight. Now that is really a strong link, but we can use it as a weak link. So we call that a surrogate weak link. Now those two candidate threes in row eight are called the base of the skyscraper and the two conjugate pairs, I like to call them the spires because they're like two uneven tall buildings. And you really need to master these skyscrapers because they are a very powerful technique and can provide up to four candidate eliminations at once. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here on candidate seven, we see we have two conjugate pairs in column six and column seven. Now in the first example, the skyscraper was right side up. This one is kind of upside down, if you will. So we have a conjugate pair from here to here on candidate seven, and we have a conjugate pair from there to there on candidate seven. Our base is in row one. The two blue sevens are the base, and you can see that's another surrogate weak link. And the candidate sevens that we can eliminate are going to be here and here. There are only two this time. Those two red sevens can see both of the yellow sevens and therefore they are false. So you can eliminate them, but let's put them back in and draw the chain. We have a strong link from there to there and another strong link from there to there. And then we have our weak link, which is a surrogate weak link in between. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. All right, here on candidate six, we have a skyscraper that's facing toward the left this time. And we've got a conjugate pair there and another conjugate pair down here. And remember, the endpoints have to be in the same chute, but not in the same house, which is the case right here. And we can eliminate these candidate sixes that can see both of those endpoints. And we have two of them here and one of them right there. Okay, so you can eliminate all three of those candidate sixes. And like always, we'll put them back in. And if I can find them <laughs> and draw the chain. And the chain is a strong link here, a little short one, and another strong link here. And they are connected by a weak link. This is a real weak link this time in column seven. And there's your skyscraper. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, on candidate nine, let's light them up. And in row one, we've got a conjugate pair. And in row nine, we've got a conjugate pair. This is a really wide one. And you've gotta be able to see these no matter what shape they take. This one's pointing toward the right. Two nines are in the same chute, but not in the same house. They're in different columns. So the nines that we can eliminate in this puzzle that can see both of those yellow nines, it looks like there's one here and there's one there and there's one there. Again, we have three. So those three nines are false and can be eliminated. So we'll put them back in for now and draw the chain. We've got a strong link here and we have another strong link here and they are connected by a real weak link. It's weak because there are several nines in column one, so that's a weak link. But there you have it, strong, weak, strong. There's your skyscraper, and you can eliminate those three nines that are colored red. All right, let's go to the next one. 
Okay, here on candidate five, we've got a conjugate pair in column three and a conjugate pair in column nine. And this time the pattern is facing downwards. The spires are facing down and the base is in row four. Those two blue fives are the base and the two spires are in column three and column nine. And so that means we can eliminate this candidate five right there. And that's the only one in this puzzle. There's only one candidate five that can see both of those yellow fives and it's right there in row nine, column eight, and we can eliminate that. So let's put it back in and draw the chain. We've got a strong link here and a strong link here. And then we've got a surrogate weak link in between. Okay, there's your skyscraper with one elimination that time. Sometimes there'll be none, but you just have to keep going. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate seven and let's color the cells this time because there's something I want to show you. We have a conjugate pair in column three and another conjugate pair in column seven. And the endpoints are in the same shoot but not in the same house because if they were in the same house, you'd have an X-wing. If this seven were moved down one cell, then that would be an X-wing and you wouldn't need the skyscraper. So in this diagram, we can remove two sevens that lie here and here. Those are the two sevens that can see both of those endpoints. But I want to show you something here. Let's use our imagination and let's say we're looking at an X-wing instead of a skyscraper. And let's say those four yellow cells are the X-wing with the base sets in column three and column seven. And that blue seven now is a fin. That means you can eliminate this seven from the sashimi X-wing, and then you can do the same thing in block one, imagining that this is your sashimi cell and that is your fin. Now you can eliminate the seven in row two, column two, but you have to do that in two separate operations, but with the skyscraper, you can do it all at once. So it's much more efficient. All right, let's do one more and then we'll wrap it up for today. Let's look at candidate one and in row three, we've got a conjugate pair. And in row seven, we also have a conjugate pair. There's your skyscraper. This time it's facing toward the left. The base is in column five and the two endpoints are in the first vertical shoot, but not in the same house. And this time there are four candidate ones that we can eliminate there, 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 and there. Those four ones that are colored red can see both of those yellow ones and can all be eliminated like that. So let's put them back in and draw the chain. And we have a strong link there and another strong link there and they are connected by a surrogate weak link in column five. And there you have it. There's your skyscraper with four eliminations. I think that's gonna do it for today. So let's go back outside and finish up. So now you should have a handle on these simple chains, which will make learning about the more complex chains and loops in later lessons a lot easier for you. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in video number 17 on empty rectangles, which is one of my personal favorites. Until then, be well and be happy.